Hi, this is Benjamin again, and this is the second video of a video series about AVL. AVL is a very useful and handy tool for um, aerodynamic and flight dynamic calculation. And uh, we will now um, talk about the different input files um, you want to prepare and um, what I've prepared in order to walk you through the process is a little sketch of um, a plane called <laughs> Ben's airplane version one and you see um, yeah this is just a sketch uh, we have a fuselage uh, which is rather slim we also have a wing with a flap and um, you see it's a trapezoidal wing out of three sections and um, we have an aileron of course and a wing tip and then we also have the horizontal stabilizer we use a standard um, cross section um, tail design and you see horizontal stabilizer vertical stabilizer and this um, horizontal stabilizer is lifted up by these 175 millimeters you see all the numbers here are millimeters and um, I hope I wrote down all the necessary um, dimensions. Okay, now let's go back to um, our plan. What are we going to cover in this video? Now, as I um, mentioned already, we are going to model this aircraft, this airplane I just showed you. And first we're going to modify the geometry file. And we will take a look at uh, one example first, the one we also had in the video number one. Um, it's called uh, Super G. And um, so just, you know, this is kind of the header. Um, then we have some keywords, for example, uh, surface and section and so on. So this is the, the geometry file uh, through which AVL will know your geometry. So we're going to cover um, these keywords as uh, surface section, um, how do you define your aircraft geometry in there. Also, um, I'm gonna say something quickly about how you input airfoil data. I'm gonna show you how to do it. And um, maybe also, yeah, talk about polars, drag polars, but this will be outsourced in another video. Additionally, we will cover control surfaces how do you define um, aileron, rudder, flaps, and so on. Uh, you will also get to know some features, um, and I'm going to talk about the fuselage, how do you model it. After that, we're going into the run case file, quickly adapt that for our use, and also the mass input file, but that's later. Okay, so let's take a look at the mass file again. Um, we had this last time already in the first video. Now in the mass file you define the units and you basically list all the mass components and with a run file um, you define all the trim um, conditions and further aerodynamic uh, state variables. Okay, let's go back um, and we are going to create or copy this file, save it to a new name and let's call this um, Ben's Air Airplane version one and save that to the runs directory first. We're gonna move this into a different folder later. First, let's also uh, change the name here. The first line is always the name of your airplane. So change that. The next um, lines are the header for the reference uh, information. First, we have the Mach number. Well, we are flying very slowly. It's a model aircraft, so we can leave that on zero. Now the second line, we don't really need it. It's for symmetry um, in different on different axes. For example, if you want to model half a, a half model in, in a wind tunnel. But the next line is uh, quite important to us. There we have the reference area. Usually that's the wing area, the reference cord, C ref, and also the reference span. And let me just pull this over. Um, to have it side by side so our workflow is a bit simplified. Now to calculate the wing area we just um, calculate the trapezoidal uh, area here and I'm gonna do this quickly and then also calculate the reference cord. Okay so the uh, area um, calculates to 0 
0.39 square meters and the reference chord is just the area divided by the reference span and that's 0 0.159 and we can input this into our file quickly. The next line is the definition for the moment reference location and we will just put in 0, 0, 0 here um, and the line below that is a friction coefficient that basically adds a constant uh, friction to the center of gravity. We don't need this so that's why we delete it. Um, okay now let's go into the actual definition of our surfaces. A surface as you can see here is um, a way to describe a wing or a tail anything that produces lift basically and has a uh, airfoil shape. After the keyword surface you give uh, that surface a name. Uh, the first one is going to be the wing. Now in the next line um, we have a line for the um, definition of the vortices, the spacing, and um, you can see the first one is for the chordwise spacing and the other one is for the um, spanwise spacing and there's a spacing parameter in there. As always if you have questions you can look up this keyword in the AVL doc document documentation for example let's uh, have a look at n chord and just type it in there and you can see um, that's the number of chord wise hor horseshoe vortices placed on the surface so uh, if you don't know what certain parameters mean you can look it up here now for our airplane we don't need so many in spanwise direction. In principle when you have a lot of um, vortices that takes a long time to calculate if you don't have so many um, it's quicker but also less accurate. Okay now the next keyword is Y duplicate and that reflects the wing image about the Y plane and we do want this and that's why we keep it at zero so zero is the um, um, position of the plane where it's being deflected. There's a angle parameter and that is a twist angle for the whole surface. We leave that at 2 and there are also scaling factors for the whole wing. We are not intending to scale anything so I'm also going to delete this one and the translate um, is a keyword where you can um, position your zero point for the de definition of the surface um, to a certain point. Um, well, I'm gonna delete this quickly. Uh, we might add it later. Um, but let's first go into the definition for the sections. Now the section um, is basically, a, yeah, like the name says, a section of the wing. Um, now we look at the root chord uh, section um, and we can simply um, define the leading edge position of that section that gives us the um, position in three-dimensional space and we also define a chord. The parameter angle uh, stands for a twisting of the local chord there. We don't need this and we also don't need um, the further definition for the spanwise and uh, chordwise vortices. We have done this uh, up there. If you omit this information, uh, AVL would just um, assume the standard values. Okay, now let's see. We are 300 millimeters from the top and actually now it makes sense to add this translate um, tr translate uh, keyword here. So we say we are 300 millimeters from um, our reference point. Now as you can see in the drawing we can start um, or the point uh, for the first uh, section is at 0, 0, 0 and the chord uh, is 180 millimeters wide. So type this in, the angle will stay at zero, we don't twist it. Now in the next line we want to define what airfoil is used for that section. Uh, we do that by the keyword uh, file and then we type in the name of that file, the profile or the airfoil file and um, let me just quickly show you what an airfoil file is. Uh, there's a really big database online, it's called airfoiltools.com and you can search for different airfoils. Let's for example search for Drila. 
Mark Drila, he has uploaded or someone else has uploaded a few airfoils here. And we can have a look at the airfoil. Um, and you want to maybe see the definition in the file itself. You can see on the top, that's this um, certain airfoil, which we just saw. And the definition is just uh, a point cloud, basically. So we start at 1, um, x1, y close to 0. So we start at the trailing edge and then go all the way through by defining um, points on that on that curve and go back. That's basically how a, a airfoil, two-dimensional airfoil um, for, for that section is defined. And we can download our own file, even maybe uh, produce our own airfoil. Uh, but that's too much for here. Um, you can also use uh, the standard NACA airfoils. I think three and uh, no four and five digits are supported by AVL directly, so you don't need the file as a separate file in the folder. So let's just put it here first. Probably later we're going to use a different airfoil, but let's first put um, the NACA airfoil here. All right, that sounds good. Now let's come to the next keyword that is control, and that is for, for defining the uh, control surfaces. And as you can see, um, in that section we have a flap, um, and we can give it the name flap, and then we need to define a gain parameter, that is how much it's deflected, um, a hinge location, and a hinge vector and a sign for duplication. For example, the flap um, on the one side, um, when it uh, deflects positively, it should also deflect on the other side in, in the same way. For the aileron, it's, it's uh, anti-symmetrically. So um, that's a minus, as you can see down there. Let's just uh, adjust these parameters. So the name is flap, the gain uh, is also one. The gain is useful if you want to mix, for example, different, um, yeah, di different controls. But we are not going to do that, so leave it at uh, one. Now the x x hinge uh, location is uh, the relative location of the hinge um, at the certain section. For our plane, um, that is zero point seven two. Um, we type this in. The hinge vector is um, the vector um, around which the hinge revolutes or um, turns around. Okay, um, we don't need the aileron, so I'm going to delete this quickly. And we will put the hinge vector, it's just around y, the y-axis, so put this in. And there we have it. That's our first section. Everything we know is defined. Now, before we go on, let's quickly check um, the coordinate system. We define, or in AVL, the, the x-axis is defined rearwards, facing the tail of the airplane. Um, the y-axis is along the wing span, and the z-axis comes out of the paper um, facing up. Now, at least for Germany, where I'm from, uh, we use a different coordinate system, so just make sure um, that you know how to convert this in case you want to use certain derivatives or other values out of AVL. Just make sure you keep that in mind. All right, um, now we can go into the next section. It's helpful uh, for your own reference to give the section names. That's what I like to do. So we start with the inner section. Um, that's the root chord. And the next section is just straightforward, like the first section. Um, we just see where's the position, that's also zero. On y-axis, we do have um, uh, an offset there, that's 450. And for z, we are again at zero. It also might help you to copy this comment uh, line up there to see what well values are um, where otherwise it's it's maybe a bit hard in the beginning. Okay, now the chord uh, length is 180 millimeters. The angle again is zero and the rest, we can delete the rest. The file, again, we can type in, for example, NACA 
uh, 24.12. Actually, let's change that. We, um, in this airfoil tool database, let's look for an airfoil called RG15. It's a well-known airfoil for model airplanes, very efficient. And let's get the, dot, the data and um, save that. Be sure to save it as a .dat file. And let's save that to the directory where our airplane is in. And I'm going to create a new directory just to kind of keep things clear. Um, put this in there, Ben's airplane. And let's also put uh, our geometry definition file, the AVL file, uh, into that directory so we don't confuse things. Just uh, save a new copy in into that new directory. Okay, so now let's uh, include uh, the name and we navigate to the new directory. You see the name is just called rg15 dot dot. We can copy that uh, and insert it into our program. You might know you can write a file or uh, a file, a field. <laughs> So um, AVL is just uh, just cares for the first four letters. Everything afterwards is um, yeah you you can omit that. Okay, now let's uh, add the control surface definitions for the second section, and we might just copy this because it's the same as you can see. Um, and we have another control definition that's aileron. Um, you see both uh, those control sections are um, uh, join, adjoined to, to that section. Okay, um, we want the same X hinge position, it's the same, the hinge vector is also kind of the same, it's a bit tilted, but uh, we will not care for that. And the sign of duplication is negative because the aileron is, uh, should uh, deflect anti-symmetrically. Now let's quickly go through the next sections. Uh, the next section, um, there's no movement in X. There's uh, Y is 0 0.76 for the leading edge and Z leading edge is zero also. The chord of course um, is changed on the section three, um, as you can see on the right. And we also omit those data we copy the um, airfoil file here, we want to use the same on each section. Now only the aileron is left, the flap is not um, defined on this section, so we can delete it. And um, now we are also, we need one last section, I'm just going to copy this section three for simplicity and uh, just yeah edit the last um, parameters here. X is 130, you can calculate that uh, 130 millimeters from, from zero. Uh, y is 750, so in total our span is 1.5 meters um, and so on. Then we have the same airfoil file and now we can delete all the rest until the next surface is defined because our wing surface is fully defined. There's no more sections we need to define. So now I've deleted this one and let's just rename this as N section for the wing surface. All right, that sounds good. Now let's go into the definition for the tail. Now I'm going to name this the H horizontal stabilizer. That's the one down here. And our numerical definitions for the uh, chordwise and spanwise definitions we can we can just uh, leave it like above. Um, again, if you want to know what this is, just look it up in the um, documentation. Now the angle is the uh, incidence angle. We are going to put this to minus two degrees. Um, just a reminder, the wing was set to plus two, the tail to minus two. And uh, you, you can adjust this as you want, but I found out this is a good aerodynamic design. Now, um, translation, uh, again, we want to translate 
um, our local defining coordinate system to that position of the leading edge of the um, horizontal stabilizer. Okay, I'm just quickly adding this note here. That's the side view. Um, so the airplane tail is tilted 90 degrees to the right or left, no, to the right. Um, and then we are going to add also a translation for the horizontal stabili stabilizer in Z. The scale, we don't need this, we can delete this, um, as we do not intend to scale anything. Okay, for the first section, uh, we are in X, the X leading edge position is zero, the Y leading edge position is also um, zero, for the bottom part at least, um, as you can see in the side view, sorry, in the, in the main view you can see that, and um, the chord is of course uh, needs to be adjusted, that's uh, 0 0.1, and uh, the angle is zero, the local angle, and we can delete again this uh, span-wise and chord-wise horseshoe vortex uh, distribution. For our airfoil on the um, on the tail, we will use a Naka airfoil. It's a symmetrical airfoil. You can use whatever you want. I'm going to use the okay. Let's use the zero uh, zero ten that has a thickness of ten. That's that's good. Okay, now we have also a, an elevator definition. And we can copy these uh, helps here, this comment line, so we see uh, what we are doing. Um, the gain is 1, the x hinge position is, as you can see in the drawing, uh, 0 0.7. Um, so we're going to put this there. The hinge vector is again the y-axis and that should be good for our definition. Sign of duplication of course positive for the elevator. Okay, now we need to define another section. Let's name these sections again. Um, we need to define a middle section um, where this dent is in, in the geometry. And for the next section, we are just going to copy the first one and edit uh, that one. I'm going to do this real quick and not um, yeah, say too much about it because I think the process is rather clear. Well, I forgot to give the um, dimensions here, um, so I'm going to add this quickly. You probably could figure it out with the angle, but let's just add, a, add that here. So that's 200 and 220. Okay, now let's uh, add the other sections. I'm just, I'm just gonna go through them quickly. Um, you will notice that I've made a mistake here. We're gonna fix this later. Um, let me just quickly add the end section here. Uh, that is the top. And we don't. Uh, we do need a control definition that is basically the whole section there as a control. Okay, now we can come uh, to the um, vertical stabilizer or rudder. This is what it's called here. Let's call it a vertical stabilizer. And basically the same process. Um, I. That's why I'm also going to skip that or just show it to you very briefly. So just edit according to the definition on the right. And in the end, what I would like, uh, I always like to do is just add a comment line. When uh, did you create that file? So you kind of know who created it uh, at what time and you have different versions, uh, if you have different versions for the airplane. Okay, that's good. Now we have a complete definition and let's try to import it into um, AVL. For that we need to get the path again, like in video one showed, uh, shown and just type load and insert that name. And we're gonna have a look at the geometry, type in G. Now, uh, <laughs> it looks good, but uh, there's one 
problem. As you can see down back there, we have um, we have a problem. Our exposition of the leading edge of the outer most outer um, section there is is not correct. Um, that's why we're going to go back to the file, look at the correct section, and you see there's zero zero. That's not correct. Actually, that must be a hundred minus. Um, 30 so that's 70 there 70 millimeters 0 0.70 and save that file and reload it in order to reload it we need to go uh, back into the AVL menu type it in there and boom there we have it that's the geometry we wanted and yeah this is um, how you uh, input or create a AVL file, a geometry input file for calculation. Now a few words concerning the fuselage. The fuselage is um, being built with the keyword body and you can yeah you can read through the documentation it's not not so hard. Um, basically it's similar to, um, to a surface um, and you can also translate of course and put in um, uh, kind of airfoil shape file which gives you the top or side view um, of the body. Well why didn't I model the fuselage? Um, the reason is that it's it doesn't have a big influence um, on our design so we can omit that and in general if you can it's better to not model it um, because the slender body theory behind it um, sometimes causes trouble. That's all you need to know if you want to model it. Just be be careful and have a close look at the plots. Now let's quickly talk about drag. Um, in AVL, since it's a vortex lattice method, you can only model the induced drag, um, but no profile drag or pressure drag. Um, but you can um, kind of yeah put put in a polar a drag polar in there. Um, using this keyword CDCL and um, the polar is just a quadratic fit um, for your real polar and there are two ways one way uh, you can model drag is for the whole surface so the whole wing has a certain polar um, you can calculate that in another program or um, yeah, if you, if you know it you can just type it in and you have basically four four regions. You can see the details there. Um, then different. So this is for the whole surface, but you can also define it for each section. If you have different profiles, maybe on different different sections, you want to use this uh, method uh, where you model uh, the polar for each section. You can find more detail in the documentation sheet for AVL uh, concerning this point. All right, because time uh, is running so quickly and this video already is running for 28 minutes, we will um, put the run case and mass input files into the next video. Um, just a re uh, quick recap, what have we learned for this video? Um, well, we had a look at the AVL file, that is the geometry input file. Um, we looked at surface and section definitions. Um, I also talked about uh, the airfoil data, how you can input certain airfoils. Uh, we didn't talk too much about the drag polars uh, just at the end quickly, but you know where it is in the documentation. Also about control surfaces, other useful keywords like um, translate and so on. And I also said something quickly about the fuselage. Now. For the next video, that is probably the last one, we are going to talk about the mass, um, the run cases and the calculation. Um, for the calculation, we will have a look at the lift distribution and the Oswald factor, basically efficiency. Uh, we will do some trim calculations, that is how much your control surfaces need to deflect in order to um, produce equilibrium in the air. We are going to uh, we're going to look at static stability, neutral points, and outputs. What you can get out of AVL um, in the end for further calculations or um, use. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something and see you in the last video. Bye bye.